Alright, this video is uh, how to do valve latch adjustment on a D16Y8. That is a Honda Motor VTEC. Now, uh, so what you're going to start off doing, go ahead and take off the, the tens that hold the valve, uh, valve cover. And there's uh, five of them, as you can see. One, two, three, and four and five and then it should come right off also if uh, you have a leaky gasket right now would be the best time to go ahead and uh, buy a new one and of course you're going to loosen the lug nuts raise the car up take the wheel off then if you have a splash guard go ahead and take that splash guard off and uh, get a socket and a ratchet for to turn the motor. And uh, also, you should be using a jack stand right now. I don't have one right now because uh, I'm using it to hold up another car. But I mean, uh, don't be like me and don't use one. That's all I can say. Be safe. All right. If you want to take out the the spark plugs you can go ahead and do that to make the engine turning a little bit easier I left them in there it's no biggie uh, you're gonna want to take off the timing belt cover I mean just the top portion it has two tens on each side and that's gonna be that to get it off you're gonna have to loosen up the power steering bracket and the power steering so you could get to the 10 over here over here Alright, so let's get down to a uh, valve lash adjustment. Alright, so for cylinder number one, this is cylinder number one right here. It's going to have uh, four valves, two on each side. Now what you're going to do, you're going to turn the... Oh, don't forget to put your car in neutral. Now what you're going to do is, uh, you're going to turn the engine counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, reverse of a clock, so it's going this way this way not that way this way now so you're going to turn it from the bottom you're going to go ahead and turn that and up till it says one the cam pulley the sprocket cam sprocket it has a uh, something that says up right there and uh, so you're going to put it up like that so that's for cylinder number one and then, uh, they should be able to move a little bit Yeah, see, they move a little bit. Oh, and uh, another thing I forgot to say is uh, you're going to do this when the engine is cold. So, like, when you wake up in the morning or after your car has been sitting for a while. I almost forgot to say that. I'm just rushing through this first part because I'm not really teaching how to raise up a car or anything else. This is to show valve lash adjustment. Now, uh, so for this engine the what you call it the exhaust side this is the exhaust side closest to the exhaust the the valve lash on that one is nine thousandths of an inch to eleven thousandths so what that means going to look like this nine thousandths of an inch to eleven thousandths the reason why mine says both is because the top portion is nine thousandths and the bottom portion right here is eleven thousandths. It is a little bit different. It's uh, laser etched, so just the front is nine thousandths. And for the intake side, the one you're going to want to use for that one is seven thousandths to nine thousandths. So this is seven thousandths, top portion. The bottom portion is 9,000. Now, that, what it means is, uh, when it says it like that, 7,000 to 9,000, you're going to want to do it in the middle. So it would be 8,000. Now, I use my engine for different other reasons. I want the max performance out of my engine. And uh, so I'm putting it at 7,000 because I want it the valve clearance, I mean the 
yeah, the clearance to be tighter so my valve opens more and lets in more air. And same thing for exhaust, so it lets out more exhaust. Now, um, with that being said, if it, this is your first engine that you're doing valve lash on, go ahead and put it in the center. So this one will be eight thousandths. The reason why I'm saying that is because if you put it too tight, you're going to end up with a burnt valve, and that would mean you have to take off the whole head and do all this other work, and you don't want that to be happening. So if you are experienced, you could go ahead and do this. Now I'm not saying you have to put it at eight thousandths. You could also put it at nine thousandths, but uh, eight thousandths would be the what I would recommend just because it is in the center and you don't want to put it too too much or too little so what should be happening let me see so I got my seven thousandths and this is where you put it at right there it slides in right there now it is a little loose you want to be able to feel a little bit of drag so it feels like it's pinching it a little bit right now it doesn't but you're going to go ahead and loosen this nut right here right there and uh, let me get the tools and I'll be able to show you alright so I got my tools now and uh, so what you're going to do you're going to slide it back and forth and then if it's too loose you're going to go ahead and loosen it. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So I already loosened that nut, which is a 10 millimeter. And so to tighten it, just put a flathead screwdriver. Go ahead and turn it to right just a little bit. Because that's all I need right now. See, that's too tight. So I can't get it out of there. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen it just a little bit. Moves a little bit, but it's still too tight. Go ahead and loosen it some more. Uh, now it's too loose. So I'll tighten it just a little bit. And that's just right. There's a little bit of pull on it but still not too much so what you're going to do if I had uh, if I was able to use my two hands right now what you're going to do is you put the screwdriver on top well you put the wrench around there on the nut and then you hold you hold the flat head on top while you tighten up the nut and then after you tighten it you're going to go ahead and check it again to make sure nothing moved. If it did, go ahead and loosen it back up and redo it. And uh, So you're going to go ahead and tighten that. And then you could get, since I'm using 7 thousandths, if I try to put in a 8 thousandths, if, if it is correct, it won't fit. And if I try to put in a 6 thousandths, it will be too loose. So you're going to go ahead and do that for these two. And then go ahead and get your other feeler gauge for this one and go ahead and do the same to the other side so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then I'll turn the camera back on alright so I went ahead and uh, I did the valves on this side on the number one cylinder now what you're gonna do you turn the crank counterclockwise until the cam the up position is facing all the way left and then you're gonna do number three cylinder now which is these two right here and right here right here and uh, right there so see they're loose and they do the same thing for this one and to do it's uh, one three four two that's the way uh, you're going to adjust them after you do number three the up position should be facing all the way down you're going to go ahead and do number four cylinder after you finish with that one, 
It's going to be facing all the, right, all the way right, the up position all the way right, and you're going to do number two cylinder. So after that, you're done. You could go ahead and go all the way around and uh, check your clearances again to be safe, and that's not a bad idea. And uh, just go ahead and put everything together and start up your engine. And uh, you don't have to do that again until uh, another 30,000 miles. Every 30,000 miles, it should be done. Alright, well, I hope this video was helpful, y'all. And uh, if you guys have any questions, just let me know.